Hi, Tsubi. I heard that. <clears throat> it should be up. It flickered for a second, and then I don't see it anymore. Oh, it blinked. Refresh the page. Oh, thank God. What? Over there. That is a really big delay, though. What do you mean? Hold on, let me see how long of a delay is. Oh, it's not too bad. All right, cool. I need to um, I need to change it so that I just see the chat, though. I just want to see the chat more than oh, anything. Penis. Okay. Right, that's fine. Hang on. Let's see cool. how far back we are in the stream. All right. Stream, how is my voice compared to theirs this time? Whoa, when did Cambo? What? Wait, when... Cambo's in. Stem. Yeah, See, I don't want to load it up in case it does that thing with the turtle beaches again. Turtle beaches? Oh, I'm frozen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a shame. He looks European. I take off the thing because everybody complained about that. Taliban stabby. <laughs> 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 All right. So, is it look good? <clears throat> Besides, yeah, but your mic. Oh, your your camera still isn't up. My camera's not up. No, no. no in Skype, is... it's not. It's yeah, like... yeah. It's Skype. It, it, uh, he just oh, right, sources okay. it. Okay, fair enough. Why am I hey. wearing pants? Yeah. I always wear pants. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> it only took only took forty five minutes. We're ready to go now. Okay. Right. Um, five four three two one. Everybody. Five four three two one. Hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, it's Gorilla Hands, and we've got and, and uh, this week we've got a new guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm B A. Oh, I'm the Bows. Um, and I guess I've been with the forum now about a year. So yeah. right. Probably. It's been that yeah. long. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yep. Indeed. And returning from last week is Wiggy and, and Stabby, obviously. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy, man. We made it to a second episode. That's that's a that's a big <laughs> feat in my book. Never get to. <laughs> <laughs> so Enjoyed its sequel. Yeah. Um, did uh, Labor Day just went by? Did you guys do anything special for that? Uh, you guys? No. Um, yeah, I did. I was waiting for everybody else to go. I took a vacation. You go anywhere special? Yep. My bedroom. Uh-oh. <laughs> right. It's special, all right. What about you, Stabby? Uh, I went to a lake house and was tubing on a tube behind a boat. Tubing? Um, was very Overpowered? Hello? I was, I was very sore the next day, let me tell you that. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Boston for the first time. That was, that was a lot of fun. Really nice city. Definitely recommend um, going to check that out if you've never Did been there Did you see before. Fenway? From the outside? No, they weren't. They weren't playing. The Red Sox weren't playing that weekend, so we just never went around to going down there. But uh, it's really nice city. Of all the cities I've been to in the Northeast, that's actually the, my favorite city I've ever been to. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to see a Red Sox game. That and the Cubs game. Those are my two bucket list places to see. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of baseball, but I, I do think it's worthwhile to, to go check them out. I've seen the Phillies play. I haven't seen uh, the Red Sox yeah, play though. Shut up. One thing about it that's like that's like <laughs> uh, living history. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we will, let's go ahead and get the um, the podcast underway. Um, and uh, definitely big thanks to BA for jumping on here because there is a big time difference. What is it? Uh, it's twelve um, fifty yeah, over there. Yeah, 10, ten to one. Just yeah. don't tell my work. <laughs> oh no, no, he's calling. We he's, he's see him in the future. Watching it right now. Like, yeah, he's like, why are you late to work? Um, okay, so what I want to talk about since since uh, the last podcast, Treyarch has released the I guess they call it the care package. Black Ops 2 version and the hardened edition. And the care package is $180. And what's included in that is a remote control, they call it the MQ-27 Dragonfire drone, which is like a little RC helicopter. Which Pretty sweet. I, I guess. I don't know. Um, $100. Stab, do you have your, you have your uh, Modern Warfare 2 night vision goggles? I do, actually. Hang on. You should, you should show them off. <laughs> you also get the Nuketown Zombies bonus map. You get the Nuketown 2025 bonus map. You get uh, this steel side. Oh shit! He's got the RC car. God, Fucking a. <laughs> you get the collectible two-sided steel book, which has got some artwork in it, 
You get challenge coins. I have no idea what those are supposed to be used for. I, I, I don't know if they add something to the game. Yeah, I guess something in Elite. You get some extra weapon camos, which I think people <laughs> would be excited about. Uh, you get new player backgrounds, a soundtrack, and some <laughs> avatar themes. I don't think anyone's paying attention to you, Grillo. <laughs> Where's this guy on his head? <laughs> I got, I don't see I'm not watching Stabby's stream so I don't know what no, no, okay, it's not Stabby it was he had the RC car on his head oh <laughs> oh you got yours on your head fuck you well it's night vision goggles that makes sense <laughs> yeah but this has got a bomb on it so you strap a bomb to your head <laughs> so you put it on your head okay I am overpowered don't judge me so that's $180, and judging by the fact that you're more interested with the RC car on Wiggy's head than what I had to say I, I feel like nobody's gonna buy that well hang on. Modern Warfare Two. What did I pay for this? Uh, like a hundred dollars? I don't think you paid one hundred and eighty dollars. No, I paid one hundred and twenty dollars for these. I think. I think the game was or something like that. It was it was expensive, but I also bought. I spent like over five hundred dollars on Modern Warfare Two. Why? What in the world did you? Okay, pay for? look. I had a ri the original Xbox, like the very first gen Xbox, and it was I shared between me and my brother, uh -huh. and then. Modern Warfare 2 was coming out, and I was like, well, fuck this. I don't want to share an Xbox anymore. So I went out and bought the first 250-gig Xbox, and I just actually replaced it, like, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. But that that was, like, $300 or something like that. So okay, plus, well, that's plus not... a regular copy of the game, plus the Prestige Edition it was a pain in the ass. Wait, you bought a regular copy? And no, no, I'm sorry. The, the Xbox came with a regular copy. Oh, okay, okay. Fucking so... Robert Bowling had you on some kind of fucking trance or some oh, shit. Oh, man, he... I was so psyched for that game. I was like, yes, Modern Warfare 2! And then well, it turned out to be shit. Okay. Well, now I know where the animosity comes from. Yeah, there you go, because you spent all that $500 on the damn game. <laughs> um, well, do you think $180? It didn't break, is, is there anybody that would buy that at all? Anyone even think, remotely interested? Oh, yeah, there's people who buy it. I think it's pretty cool. You. I'm talking about you guys. Oh, Are you, no, any no. of you guys well, get think, think about it this way. I mean, you've got the Borderlands, the Borderlands 2 Loot Chest Edition has sold out everywhere. People are crying out for that thing. Really? But, what is it Yeah, come yeah. It, it's just, imagine the care package, but uh -huh. it's a chest from Borderlands. It's okay. the same, it's basically Concept. the same premise, mm -hmm. but everyone's shouting out for this thing just because they want that on the shelf. It's, it's one of these things, there's blatantly going to be people out there that have got enough disposable income to spend that much on a game and if they want to get this collector edition because it's collector because it's going to be rarer they will do it i guess for me it, it never really appeals to me because stuff like weapon skins and and those little in-game tokens it's just mm. never really interests me it's why i never prestiged in um cod 4 because there's no incentive um you just got a different icon next to your name but one of the things i find kind of interesting is like that that Dragonfire drone, it seems like it would be more marketed to kids. I can't really imagine anyone mm -hmm. who's 18 and older playing it beyond the first day that they get it. It, it seems like it would be meant more for kids, like RC cars. But the game's mature, so I don't know. It just yeah. Well, Wait, the game's mature? Isn't it? Isn't Black, isn't Black Ops 2 yes, rated M? it's rated M. The, yeah. the certification on the age group of the players is probably going to be two different things. Well, hang on. There's one thing I want to note before... Um, what's up, Nasty? Have you looked at the uh, the prices for Resident Evil Six, like the, no. the the packages? You know, one of them's over ten thousand no. dollars or something like that, right? Wait, what? It's for, it, it's like is this is this sold by Capcom or is yeah, this, this is something Capcom. on Capcom? No, this is Capcom. Okay. The game, the game itself. There's one game, the regular standard game, and that comes with you know just Resident Evil Six. Then there's a, a PSN version or a PlayStation version mm -hmm. that comes with like Resident Evil One, Two, and Three, as well as Six. As digital downloads. Then there's one for the Xbox, which is um, Resident Evil 4 and 5, I believe. Yeah. And then there's one that you have a leather jacket like Leon Kennedy, and that is what makes it like nine thousand dollars. Yeah, it's it's like it's the, it, the ridiculous amount. Yeah. Does it come with its own T virus sample or something? Yeah, I like it's it become the, it's quite the expensive tyrant from Resident Evil. That is <laughs> no, it's it's <laughs> just it's just a leather jacket. It might not be nine thousand dollars. It might be hundreds of dollars, yeah. but. It's it's expensive as shit. <laughs> Hundreds and ten thousands a big difference. <laughs> it's one billion. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I forget because I think I read it in Japanese currency, and I don't remember how that how that translated over to American dollars. But it, it does translate. You just can't use yen. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just saying. Um, it was it, a lot it, of money. It, it is interesting because one of the things I've heard in the last I don't know four or five years is that a lot of companies are really trying to find ways to bring in more revenue because the production costs of video games have increased 
you have ADD, Wiggy. <laughs> <laughs> the production values for games no have, argument for have in, has increased dramatically. Um, like and games cost much, much more to make now, and they're trying to find new ways to bring in more money. And obviously, DLC has become extremely popular. And I guess these obviously are working if people are willing to spend this much money. But um, I, for me, the only thing I think is actually worth getting in this entire list would be uh, the the zombie bonus map. And you can get the zombie bonus map in the hardened edition, which is 80 bucks. But that's $20 more than the game, and I don't think I'm going to spend $20 for the zombie bonus map. So uh, for me, it's not really worth it. And and I know they're going to sell these maps later on, so I'm just going to stick with the normal edition. But um, I guess people people use it. I mean, Wiggy, when's the last time you used your RC car? Uh, it's never had fucking batteries. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's, see, that's, that's think- what... I, feel I like want to buy the Harden Edition because I want the big penis emblem. That's what I want. <laughs> Did it even say it what take... the player cards are going to be? Do what? Does it say what the player card backgrounds are going to be? Did it even show what they were going to no, be? No, no. And of course we're not going to know until the game comes mm-hmm. out. And if they do, if they tease it, you know, that would kind of give it away. Yeah. I think they want people to buy it so you can see what it is, and it's probably going to be a whole bunch of nothing. Mm-hmm. You better say something, B.A.? No, I was just saying that... Um... Like with the hardened editions, I mean, V in the uh, EU forum, the for the people watching, it's the European side of the forum. Uh, he will buy the hardened edition just for the steelbook case, just because all of the others have been in the steelbook case. Mm-hmm. So he's quite happy to spend that extra money just to add to the collection side of it. Okay. So you're always going to have people like that that are a bit of a niche that mm-hmm. won't necessarily do it for the actual extra bonus items, but they're going to do it because they've done it with everything else. It makes sense, and it's it's working. I, 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 obviously, mm-hmm. it's working because people are buying it. For me, the other thing, especially, I have, I guess, I'm slightly jaded with the Call of Duty series. I'm sure you guys know that. But for me, for all this stuff to come out, I wish it would come out afterwards. Like they just put out the game, and for the people that really like the game, then this stuff comes out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like if the game comes out and it's a steaming pile of crap, then it's like here you spend all this money surrounding the steaming pile of crap. I, I, I mean, I'm. I don't know how good Black Ops 2 is going to be, but uh, yeah, but you know it'd be a steaming pile of crap in a pretty little box, with yeah, a nice little quad rotor. <laughs> yeah, like what did what did they do with Modern Warfare 3? Did they have something similar to that as well? Or... Um, my Modern Warfare 3 case heard. came with an added coaster. A, a coaster? coaster? Oh, right. <laughs> every every Call of Duty game I get comes with a coaster. It comes right out of the fucking Xbox. <laughs> Oh, I, and uh, I do know one person who's going to be buying the hardened edition. The fucking yes. Cambo. Fucking yes. Cambo. Spamming them links. Where he's <laughs> wearing nothing but his hardened case. Ah, that's right. The other thing then is, okay, so say you, you're top tier, you spend $180 on everything. How does... How much do you think somebody could spend with the DLC that's going to come out later, or Elite? Like, what's the... I haven't heard anything about Elite and what they're doing with that. Um... Like, do you have to? It's a yearly subscription, right? Yeah. So, is that is that you're gonna have to pay for that as well on top of that? Because it doesn't seem to be included in any of this stuff. No, I keep checking my account to see when it when it comes out, and I'm I'm any day now. That's probably gonna happen. It seems kind of strange if they're gonna charge 180 for that the, for everything else that Elite isn't included as well. But I guess it's another service. I. I don't really know the status of Elite because I didn't buy Modern Warfare 3. I never got into it. I mean, where, what did, what's what's your opinion on Elite right now? I think, Wiggy, you've played the most Modern Warfare 3. I mean, what, what's your opinion of it right now? Not Take take out everything that's happened in the past. Where is it sitting right now? Right before okay, it's, fu- it's functional right now, mm-hmm. and they've added things at the end that, you know, if it would have been there from the beginning, like right now, there's clan challenges. Mm-hmm. Like you know, before they had you know most ki- most TDM kills, you know most dom caps. But now there's actual activities that the clan can do to rank up as well, and those are coming in at the end. I mean, the stats, you know, those work. It doesn't time out like it did in the beginning, although it still does from time to time. But it, you know, it's as functional now as I think what people thought it would be in the beginning. So as for right now, my guess is is that for Black Ops 2, you know, they're they're talking about these people, you know, doing the podcasting and the streaming and stuff. My bet, now I have no confirmation of this, but I'm, they, they've already said that the big channels are going to be able to do it because they want the big channels to do it. Yeah. The, I think if you're going to be a smaller channel or, you know, you're going to have to be an elite member in order to, to do that if you're not a big channel. Yeah. That's my guess mm-hmm. because that only, you know, recoups some of that cost. 
for you know partnering up with Twitch or whoever they're going to go with streaming. Uh, you know, it only makes sense to recoup some of those costs with, and also drawing a little more attention to an elite service that everybody's got such a bad taste in their mouth about right now. But is is there not going to be a chance that they're going to do with elite what some companies will do with certain products and just kind of sweep it under the rug and just kind of <laughs> produce yeah. a load of other shiny things to distract you from the fact that this thing that you used to complain about is now kind of gone. It, it it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, with as many refunds as they've sent out, if if yeah. they did with, did away with it altogether and never mentioned it again, I'm pretty sure no one would go. Where the fuck did Elite go? Yeah, nobody they, care. What's what's the last time you've seen like an official update for it? Like anything from them? Not in a while. I mean, ever since they they put the the <clears throat> clan the clan challenges into beta, that's the last thing I heard about Elite. Hmm. So you think it might be a possibility that it could disappear entirely with Black Ops? I wouldn't be surprised. It, it wouldn't Just surprise me at all. I, I, the only thing, the only reason I think they wouldn't is they put in a considerable amount of cash to Beachhead to build that damn thing. Now, if they're willing to, you know, eat that loss and walk away from it, I'm sure they would. But if they're still trying to, you know, justify that that financial obligation, then they'll try to just make it work better. But like I said, that's why I think the, the, the streaming and the podcasting is somehow going to be tied into it. That makes sense. Yeah, I could see that happening. But yeah, that'd be interesting if they just completely dropped it because it seems like for the most part, I don't know of many, any person who's really been satisfied with the Elite service. How much was it? How much if I wanted to buy it 50 right bucks. Now? It's really not that bad, to be honest. That's a... But what? Well, hang I mean, on, I hang guess on. It, you have all the DLC for it, right? Okay. You have clan challenges, which is... It's not something I care about. All right, so all the DLC is about forty-five bucks. Just, I would, uh -huh. I'd imagine. So you're paying for a five-dollar. Yeah, but we're talking service. about this DLC. Huh? Well, we're talking about this DLC that came out absolutely awful, though, aren't we? Well, regardless if it's awful or not, I mean, you're still paying for that. If you were to buy that old DLC anyway, mm -hmm. it'd be like forty-five dollars. So you're paying for a five-dollar service. I think mm -hmm. Elite now, as it stands, works and it's fine. It's. I'm like, I'm about to buy the equivalent for EA, uh, Battlefield Three Premium. Which gets me all the maps. I get like my stats reset, or I can reset my stats. I'm sorry. Um, I get double XP weeks. I get two uh, weeks access to all the DLC early. Weeks. Uh, two weeks. Weeks of double. Holy shit! <laughs> well, maybe not weeks of double XP, but like a couple days. Like actually, like. Four you get or five two days. weeks <laughs> early DLC. You get two, the two DLC weeks two early DLC, this, but you get like four or five days. Of double XP or something like that, mm -hmm. and then oh. there's premium only servers. Um, when I want to join a server, say okay, because there's server queues, so max server 64. Mm -hmm. There's 64 people in the server now. It's filled. So what they go is the rest of them go into a queue. So say there's eight people, and I would go to the ninth. If all if all the eight people in front of me were not premium members, I would be bumped to number one immediately because I paid oh, for premium. This is PC, right? PC, and it, yeah. it, it works the same for consoles. I don't know if there's a queue for consoles, but that's all the same. I think there is. A, I think I've been queued before in console. So yeah, I guess that would be something applied to it. And uh, how much is? I don't. Did you say how much that was? Forty nine ninety nine, which is fifty Shit. bucks. But like I said, you get all the DLC. You get it two weeks early, unless you're PS3. Then you actually get it like three weeks early. Um, what else? Yeah, but if you compare, if you compare that as an individual product across the industry, um, Gears Season Pass, that was for lots of DLC for the price of three. Borderlands has just released the same thing. For for Borderlands 2, there's going to be four lots of DLC already confirmed, and you can buy a season pass which costs you the amount for three of them. But that's also, those Cod are just maps and whatever. The, like, Battlefield 3 is five DLCs, plus you get it early, plus you get, you know, you get uh, you get a whole bunch of new weapons, new challenges, um, new dog tags, which, like, all that other stuff is, is useless, but it's something that you get plus... That like with Gears the season pass I mean I loved it I got all the DLC for like one free basically is what I got mm. I loved that it was nice but it was only like what thirty bucks yeah, yeah it was I think if you got it if you bought it the same day I think you got it at a reduced price for like thirty four bucks mm. and you got the skin the skin I I don't know it's 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 interesting to see how they're trying to I guess I don't know if it's recoup their losses because I've heard like I mean, a lot of these video games are like big budget movies now. The, the amount of money it yeah. costs to make this stuff, so they have to try to find a way uh, to make money beyond just a sixty dollars price tag. Um, yeah. Most of the stuff I've seen for me personally 
doesn't really interest me. Like Elite, uh, they'd have to add a little bit more in terms of clan stuff to make me interested. Um, if, if I really like Black Ops and, and, it, and it did seem like it would save money on the DLC, then I'd get it. Uh, it seems like this would work. Black Ops would make a little bit more sense with saving with DLC because you get both the maps and zombies. You don't really have that extra game mode. If you're a big yeah. zombie advocate, then that seems like it'd be a little bit more up a lot of people's alley. Um, the other thing I, I do kind of find interesting, though, is the Nuketown 2025 bonus map. Um, they're adding that in. That's going to kind of fracture playlists because obviously not everybody, like I'm not pre-ordering the game. At least I don't plan to yet. We'll see if things change. But the um, uh, there's going to be people that obviously are not going to get the new Nuketown 2025 map. And then there's also the ranked and unranked playlist. So it's kind of like fracturing the playlist more than it ever has before. I mean, what is it going to, you're always going to, I guess, have groups of people playing that map and not playing it. And I think there's even issues with uh, World at War with certain people having map packs and it would kick you out and put people together. I'm wondering if that's going to have any negative effects um, on, on matchmaking, even more so with just the fact that some people will have this map in the beginning and some people won't. Yeah, and Vaughn said that was kind of the the reason why, especially when we push for you know the more hardcore modes with bombs and flags and stuff. He he was afraid that that was going to you know that they they didn't want to exclude people that didn't want to play those you know and then break up the playlist even more. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, it's going to bring in an interesting dynamic, you know, with the ranked and unranked, and then on top of it, you know, they're going to, there's going to be people playing zombies that, that don't have the DLC, that yep. do have the DLC. So there's two, there's three different kinds right there: ranked, unranked, zombies. I mean, it's, and then it's who, and map. who has the the 2025 map? And it's, you know, it'll I, be interesting how well, because I'm sure all of you guys remember um, how Black Ops released when it first came out. It was impossible mm -hmm. to get into a match, at least with a party. Yeah. It took yeah, yeah. forever to get into a game. Now it seems like matchmaking is going to be even more isolated between ranked and unranked, and and, and now you already have a, basically a map DLC straight straight from the get go, affecting mm -hmm. everything. So it um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I mean, I don't mind. I, I can understand when games are first launched having release problems. I, I don't know of any big budget game that didn't have it. Um, just because I guess you can't really prepare for the amount of stress, but uh, Gears Three, uh, would you not consider that, that big budget? That had problems in the beginning. No, no, I didn't have any problems with it. Mm, not massive. No, not, I guess not. not. Massive problem. That is well, that's well, Gears Three is awesome. <laughs> a few, a few balancing issues. Yeah, maybe, but nothing, nothing. Yeah, well, I guess the network side. Yeah, no, it didn't really have any problems. Yeah, well, that kind of yeah, but then that again, kind of segues us into the next topic mm -hmm. anyway. You... Yeah, I'm good on it. Yeah. Well, well, that's the thing. It was on dedicated servers. That is true. Yeah, that, that, that mm. does help. Um, well, I actually hardly played rankless, so I, I think it was ninety-six or ninety-eight percent of the games uh, release were on dedicated servers. Okay. Um, one, one last thing before we switch over to Gears of War, though. Um, player cards. They're making a return, obviously. Uh, I know. I don't think anybody from the forum has any problem with it, but I've read posts on like YouTubes and over in the Black Ops forums after the game was released there's people petitioning to have them removed because they found the the emblems offensive because obviously people would make you know yeah the, the penises and then the bunnies humping bunny I think I saw a million bunnies humping bunnies it was ridiculous um, but uh, some people found them offensive um, they certainly don't qualify in the M rating they're like X rating some of the stuff you've seen do you? I mean, do you guys have a problem with the player cards at all? Are you happy to see them come back, or are you just apathetic? Like, do you just not even care? I actually think a lot of them were fucking funny myself. Mm -hmm. I, and, to, and to me, you know, <laughs> the more raunchy they were, the more creative they had to be. Because if they were just, you know, a little stick finger, stick figure dick sticking out there, mm -hmm. somebody would report that one. But if it was a really good one, you know, you know, because then they started with the <laughs> name. Okay, that was fucking bad. It feels really good. Yeah, you know, how much this... description are you gonna go into here? <laughs> you could see the veins in it, you know. Yeah, if it had like really large nuts on it, it was great. But I don't know. I think some of, I think a lot of people took it too seriously. Yes. You know, they did get annoying, but you know, but you you actually had to click the directional button to go look at them. Yeah. So if you knew they were going to be offensive, why the fuck do you keep clicking over there? Yeah, I, I never really have a problem with them. 
Um, and, and the other thing is a lot of times there's people that actually just did just really good work. Might not be offensive, but like like random, he would do a different emblem every week, and he did a really good job with a lot of Blackfire had a bunch of good ones. Yeah, so I, I I'm I'm actually those are pretty cool. It's interesting to see what what people can come up with. If it really wasn't f- uh, offensive to people, I guess maybe a solution would be just if if you wanted to filter it out, so you just see you know how there's the standard um, rank emblems that appear. Just have those automatically appear for from and, your side of the thing, I guess. That's true. And you know they're going to have a, a chat feature that says you can only hear the people on your friends list or people that's in your party. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have the same thing for the player cards. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. But I don't, I don't either. As, as long as they you know, patrol it like quickly, like they do with Black Ops, and they actually ban people who make ridiculously. Yeah. Vulgar ones that just don't need to be. When, when it first came it. out, I noticed there's a lot of really racist ones, and yeah. those actually yeah. they they disappeared fairly quickly after the game yeah. came out. I don't think people really respected after Modern Warfare 2. I don't think people respected the type of quality assurance that Treyarch was going to provide. But they, mm-hmm. they actually did a pretty good job with a lot on, on a lot of different fronts. Yeah, they squashed a bunch of the Nazi ones and the Klan ones were the worst. Yeah, <clears throat> like I was going to say, yeah. I never really got offended by any of the. Things ever, I hardly ever reported them unless you know they were trash talking them. I just report them to be a douchebag and hope to God that they got banned. But um, that's any, a spirit. Any racist ones, like anyone where I'd see a dude like a white dude hanging a black dude from a tree, like in the KKK, in there, I'd, I'd, I'd report that just because that's mm-hmm. not needed. Um, but as far as like dicks and shit, I guess I guess I'm gay, guys. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> no, as far as that goes, like it just didn't it didn't. Okay, you just like male genitalia associated with your gamer tag. Cool. I just wish you could take like actual pictures. You had like take a picture of my nuts, put them on. <laughs> <laughs> that would go horribly. <laughs> that would never work. Yeah, that um, would be bad. All right, well, yeah. So I guess just a bit, it, it's just a bit sad, though, isn't it? When you give people, you know, you try and give them something creative. You try and say, right, go out, go over here, and go do something really creative. And the first thing that they come up with is a penis. Yeah. Or they come up with the same emblem that everyone else is using. That fan emblem that came about, everybody was using that oh, yes. for a while. Which and you're thinking, and you, that was a glitch. Yeah. And you come across, the, oh. you, you're given some kind of you know creativity, some kind of freedom to go out and build whatever the hell you want, and people just come back with the same stuff over and over again. That's that's the only thing that actually bothers me. I'm not offended, it's just it's not even creative. It's just... At least be innovative with with the dicks. Do something special with it. <laughs> a lot of times, like the, like it'd be bunny on bunny, and then one dude would be a little different and put a cylinder out of the bunny, so you had a big dick going to the other bunny. That, that's about it. Lots of bunny sex, and I don't know why there was other animals, but apparently the bunny you know, on bunny one. You know why? Because they multiply. That's what happened. There you go, Wiggy. There you go. <laughs> Turn that into a little slogan. Um, the forecast multiplies. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I guess I guess we're in consensus. Nobody has a problem with the uh, player cards. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Okay, well then, uh, what I really wanted to talk about. And I'm glad B B A is here for this because he's a he's a big uh, big uh, Gears fan. Knows a lot about it as well. But I wanted to talk about Gears Award Judgment. Uh, they released. They had an interview with Cliffy B recently. I, I kind of find it funny because they interviewed him a couple weeks back, and they, like you know, is the Gears of War franchise done? And he said something to the effect of, like, "We're not milking it anymore. We're done with it." And then. Couple months down the road, <laughs> here's Gears Award Judgment. Uh, so they released more interviews. They released some free for all trailers. Uh, so I wanted to get your take on, on what you guys have seen so far and what your opinion is, especially of the free for all, that new game mode, and and how that plays. So what, what do you guys think about it? Sounded like Clifford was overruled. Yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like it. Yeah, and well, I he can't he can't have been overruled though with that short time span. He will have already known what was going on. Yeah, I guess he yeah he he probably was just saying that. But it's 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 strange. Do you, do you think it was saying that about the story of Delta Squad? I think that's of, what he was talking about. To be honest, is that what it was? Yeah, I, I, I think, that's what I think it, it was like not running them their story into the ground and keep going on and on and on about mm-hmm. you know Marcus Phoenix and shit. Because mm-hmm. we all know we all know the coal train is where it's at. That's all I'm saying. We all know that, right? We all, I do we, feel like it's a little overplayed. I mean, Coltrane's been running on Holgrain for a long time now. I wouldn't really? mind if they... There's only like two Coltrane skins. Oh, no, wait, that's like five or six now. Yeah, there's a this shitload one, of them. This one's about Baird, right? Did I, did I hear that? Yeah, right? yeah it's Baird, about yeah. Baird and Coltrane. And honestly, for me, I wouldn't mind. I know that's taking a risk, but they could have gone with completely different characters. I think the DLC was fairly popular. The... um. 
where you played as the what? Rom's Shadow. Yeah, Rom's Shadow. I don't know what <clears throat> the name of the squad was, but there were four different characters entirely. Um, and I thought that went well. I didn't see anybody really upset about that DLC, so I wouldn't have mind if they had done kind of the same thing with this. Just because we've been seeing um, Coltrane and, and Brad for so long now, or Bard or whatever the hell his name is. Baird. Baird. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell have you played Gears for this long? I never played long, as this character. I've and then go... Yet. Bard. His name is Bard. <laughs> like, you put up like how many fucking videos of Gears of War? And Have you ever seen me play is it, Bard? Is it Marcus Phonix. Is it, is it, is it, yeah, is it Mark Phonics? <laughs> Hooked on Phonics. Marco. Polo. The um. Yeah. So I would have liked them to, to see new characters. I don't really. I don't really. Obviously, I don't care about Valero. Bard. <laughs> dead ass yeah, and uh, and Coltrane I like Coltrane but uh, I'd, I'd like to see other characters like who Bernie just new characters really hey Bernie that'd be awesome there is a Bernie so the one thing I have noticed from some of the videos that I've seen it looks like there's a lot there's a, a lot of different new toys out there yeah there's like, a new um what is it called a breach shot which is like a sniper rifle uh, yeah. it's it, I guess it's, it's like, like a medium range sniper and a bolt talk yes it's a, Yes, it's a one-shot headshot and it's a three-shot to the body kill. Yeah. Um, so it's it, to me, it seems like that's better than the sniper rifle. Um, I don't yeah. think it has the same range as a sniper rifle, but if you, it I hardly scope so. But it can zoom in a little bit, can it? Yeah, but I mean, think so about sandbar. Like, think about sandbar. Yeah. So you yeah. zoom in n normal with the with the sniper rifle. It's pretty damn hard to hit somebody across the map with a headshot. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I guess on maps like Sandbar, yeah, that would be you would pick the sniper rifle over the breach shot. But honestly, I I think I'd pick the oh, breach shot yeah. nine times out of ten over the sniper rifle. I, I don't even pick up the sniper rifle right now on Sandbar because that's just uh, it, it's just not as an effective weapon. I feel like um, unless you're really good with it, but uh, it just yeah, doesn't. Yeah, yeah, you just need to get better. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what it is then. No, it's me. It's my go-to gun. Is the long shot and. As Lemmings would probably tell you, we we can both do quite a lot of damage. We can do more damage than we can with a boom shot if we get one of those days where, yeah. I've had six kills out of seven shots on the long shot. I've had seven. <laughs> but is that something you can do consistently or is that something that... Reasonably. It, it's, it's one of those you've just got to... You can't pick it up, stay where you are with it. You've got to move so people don't expect you're, you're going to have a line on them. Okay. It's It's... A, I don't know, it's one of those, I, the thing that I quite like about Gears is you've got the power weapons and there's weapons in there that take skill to use, there's, there's the average casual player who will run past these weapons, it's a power weapon, they think, oh yeah, I'm going to pick it up, pick it up, and they would have been better with the Lancer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a like, skill to kind of get used to, other other games you pick up the weapon and it's automatically always going to be better than what you dropped. Yeah, but, no, there are some like, like the... Uh... It does take some getting used to, like the dork, the torque bow. Oh I god, said torque bow. Weedy. Oh god. <laughs> Weedy. The uh, the torque bow definitely. That's well, not something well, that using the, uh, <laughs> the the torque bow. That uh, that has some problems. The digger, eh, it's not too too hard to use, but it can like it's definitely not automatic win. Like there's certain situations where you can fail completely with that weapon. Um, trying to think of other power weapons that uh, are kind of hard to use. Flame nades. Oh man, those flame nades and digger are my go-to power weapons. I pick them yeah, up every I, time. Yeah, I think flame nades are pretty easy to use. They, as long as, they were harder. After they buffed them in the beginning, they were pretty hard to use. Uh, you had to hit them right at their feet if you wanted to kill them. They they got more splash damage later on. Right? Yes, yeah. once they got yeah. the splash damage, as long as you hit within like five yards of where they were standing, you nah, maybe that's a bit much. But as long as you hit kind of in the general vicinity, you could take them out pretty easily. Yeah. And um, then if you weren't on dedicated servers, because, you know, we never actually had dedicated servers. Because <laughs> there's no way to tell, but if you, if you weren't on a dedicated server, it was like 30 feet away, you could kill somebody with them things. Just, like, throw it in front of them, and then all of a sudden they would just roll into it and die. So, okay, so uh, before we get too off track, so what was your opinion, BA, of the uh, the free-for-all video? Like, what was um, what did you think? I, to be perfectly honest, I just thought it wasn't Gears. You look at Gears and it's a strategy game. That Even though there's never going to be 100% teamwork in a public lobby where you're with random people who you're probably not even talking to whatsoever and they're not talking back and if they are, they're probably shouting some curse words or yeah. screaming at their mother. But um, it's not Gears. Gears is about pushing forward. It's about knowing where your teammates are, about making the push with everyone 
towards one one direction, one power and one spawn trap. Free for all just look like a chaotic mess. To be fair. And the cover system doesn't work either. You set up line here, let's say, and you want to get to that position. You've got to push around cover this way. Here, you set up cover here, you're exposed on three flanks already, straight away. Mm -hmm. it, I, I, I think know. what I heard was that I think um in a more recent interview, I think the, a lot of the maps that were showcased were free-for-all specific. I think the maps might be a little bit different, excuse me, for team-based really? games. So I hope that's the case, because yes, I agree with you that it looked like utter chaos. And, I, and although, excuse me, this is a new game mode. Oh dear. The, the closest thing you can come to it was, was it brother, not Brothers to the End. Wing What's Man. the game mode? Wingman. Wingman. Wingman's kind of similar to it. I mean, it's a free for all with two versus two versus two. Yeah. But that never seemed as chaotic as what I saw from those free for all games. Those free for all games just seemed like constant well, because action. You over had her. eight people going <clears throat> against it versus four people. Like, well, I guess you had eight people going against yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you had a lot of yeah, people. But I mean, you had time. teams of two, so that was instead of having yeah. eight people all going crazy, you only had four people all going crazy, kind of is what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You had two people that would push towards one group, and then that group would have two people, so it would turn into a 2v2. Mm -hmm. In this one, everyone just goes off in any random direction, and anything yeah. could happen. From a, a novice player, you know, like me, that, to come into it, like say this is the first year's game that I played, make it very difficult knowing that, you know, I'm still learning the mechanics and everything, the control schemes and everything, and now I got three guys coming up behind me and blasting me in the head. At least, you know, and like like you said, with two versus two, I could have somebody at least behind me watching my back mm -hmm. while I'm looking forward. Eight against, or, you know, seven other players against me, it make it make it hard for me to learn how to play the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. the um, I, but I want to say they wanted to add that in because the reason they added it in because a lot of people play solo. don't they play solo. So this yeah. was a solution for that. Is a lot of people just want to get they don't want to worry about um, objectives. They just want to kill and they want to play by themselves. And for Gears of War 3, they tried to add a bunch of those modes, um, and like they made like mercenary playlists, which is the, mm -hmm. like the COD equivalent, uh, and they were, I guess, all right popular. But I feel like, um, or the, the, I guess, they felt like adding a new free for all game mode was was kind of another answer for the people that play solo. Uh, so I, I don't really know what to think. I, I will agree with you, BA, that it looks really, really freaking hectic. It didn't look like Gears of mm -hmm. War gameplay really for the most part. And um, I, I, I guess they added this in for free for all, but I hated the fact that there was no down but not out. It just yeah. looked like you're playing a campaign. Like in free for all, that makes sense. It does, but I'm hoping that that doesn't translate over to other game modes. I, I mean, I hope it doesn't either, because it, it, that would really completely ruin it for. You know, I do think so. I, team based I think... games, because like now, like you know, there's times that like you get down, right? I come run over, pick you up. And then it's a 2v1 instead of a 1v2, or 1v1. Yeah. I mean, then other times, you know, see, we both die because I see, picked you up. I always thought it was weird that everyone always talks about um, the down but not out as being a genuine game mechanic of Gears, and it's always been in there, and it's, it's you know, it gives a new edge to the power weapons that can take you out in one, ship, uh, one hit from anywhere over the map, you know. Something like that, it can't. You don't go down into down, but not out if you hit somebody in the head with a rifle. Mm -hmm. So that kind of it adds an extra thing. But yet people will complain left, right, and center in COD about last stand or second chance or anything like that. And effectively, it's the, the same, same thing. thing. Uh, it's probably because that's not a standard. With gears, it's a standard mm. thing on everybody. Everybody has it. And the other thing is, I can't hit you yeah. when I'm down. Once I can't down, shoot down. you. Yeah. Uh, so that so it's with with COD. It's not a standard thing that you see all the time, and obviously, um, you can shoot back when you're in last stand. But in gears, you you know it's gonna. Be, if depending on the weapon you're using, you can expect what's gonna happen, and you don't really have to worry about them firing back. So it's uh, I, I can see it's it's similar, but I can see why uh, why people would be upset um, from the Call of Duty side of things. But yeah, I really hope that they don't remove. Um, down but not out from the other game modes. Now there are things that I have heard about. I know we're kind of downing the stuff that we've seen, but there are a couple things that I do really like um, that I've heard about. Uh, one is the removal of stopping power, which I think is absolutely yeah. fucking amazing. That's uh, awesome. I think, well, if you're not familiar with stopping power, that's what I was gonna say because I heard you say that in your video, and you know, and I have played Gears before, and I didn't think there were perks. So what did you mean it's... they they remove stopping power? When uh, when um. 
it's hard to it's hard to think about it in terms of like that. Um, in Call of Duty, stun it's, powers it's knock back. It's it's it's, back it's basically it stops you. It slows you down. When like if I'm Rody running at you and oh. you have your lancer and you're you're shooting me straight on, I will like almost come to a complete stop while running, and that's what stopping power is. It's on oh, every gun, and, and it's even gotcha. more so when you have an active reload, which Bernie will talk about in a second, but. Stopping power isn't like a perk. It's just something that is in the gun that makes you slow down. For and whatever reason, it's not it's not stomping in in the sense of you know my bullets have more power. Yeah, no, it's exactly. stopping as in the person you're shooting. Stop, 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 literally stop. stopping. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, All right. They that wanted makes sense. they wanted to make rifles a little bit more important because the, the the problem was um they thought that the shotgun that CQC combat was way too prominent. And the best way to re reduce that CQC was the stopping power. So if I'm running at you with a shotgun um, and, and then you started shooting me, I'm not going to be able to get within shotgun range of you. And they're going to down me before I can even get to you uh, is, is a simple way of looking okay. at it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so there's people that were really upset about it. And then there's other people that were that were fine with it. Me personally, I don't like stopping power. I'm glad to see it removed. I like close quarter combat. I, I do want rifles to be very important in the game, but... I feel like um, it seems like that would be more to promote camping, though. Stopping power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it does. It, it does. does. It does. That's what I mean. That's kind of the opposite of kind of Call of Duty. These people are promoting more camping and more long-range engagements, where you know everybody's in, and instead, yeah, in years, you know, everybody's running around with a shotgun. Hmm. The thing with Gears Two or Gears One though was that the first thing that you would do when you spawned was switch to your shotgun exactly. and. If anybody got any kill with a rifle, you were considered the scum of the earth, effectively. Um, huh. It was. Lance Anu. It, yeah, the the shotgun was the gun of the game. The Nasher is, you know, the trademark weapon to pretty much all of the veterans. It's not. You don't. It's the secondary weapon technically, but it is always going to be the gun of gears, at least with this this generation of players. Mm -hmm. Right. So having it removed, um, I know a lot of people are pretty happy about that. I, I know I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, what I'm sure you guys. I don't know what your opinions are, but are you glad to see the removal of stopping power at all? Yes. If yes. I didn't. I yes. didn't. Think, I didn't think. I didn't think it was a big deal until I played uh, Zeta, um, because I never. I played Gears One, but I played it so casually, I didn't even really. Play notice it, it. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean i played with friends most of the time so it was you know just oh. effing off you know 1v1 on rooftops with the nasher that's all it was and um then gears 2 came around and they introduced it in there but the rifles were still pretty weak like they didn't really do a whole mm. lot of damage um i mean they were a lot better than in gears 1 i think i didn't use them so i couldn't tell you but um they were just completely useless in gears 1 and then gears 2 came out there all right but uh that's where stopping power started, and most people still had the mentality: you spawn, press A, and left thumb, uh, left on the D-pad every time, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every I still do it now, uh, just had a habit of playing that. And then Gears Three came along, and rifles got a lot more powerful, a lot more powerful. And there are times like I've seen you just playing, right? Dude comes at you with a shotgun, and all you do is back up, spray him with lancer, because you have seven seconds of firing. Yeah. And he goes down, and you win. <laughs> So yeah, Simon Power is kind of that's crazy. that's the thing that I, I mean. Looking at my um, points, which and again, screw Coddley, give me something like the War Journal in Gears, and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, look at that. My kills are still like seventy percent Nasher, even though I'm actively trying my best to use Lancer kills so I can get the medal. <laughs> for getting so many kills with it, I can't seem to jump that any higher than what it is at about thirty percent now, because. The Nasher is still ridiculously prominent in the game. Mm -hmm. So as long as as long as they don't remove stopping power and the rifles become almost insignificant again, I'm happy. I, I think maybe buff the damage a little bit. I feel like you yeah, should, yeah you should be able to respect it, but um, they shouldn't be uh, like a lot of problems. Is if somebody takes a hill and king of the hill, all you need is maybe two people holding an area, and they can just shoot down that lane, and and, and it's game over. There's no way to really push effectively. Um, so I, I feel like. Um, if you don't have good at movement, then it sh the rifle should take you down. But if you have good movement, then yeah, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't suffer from it. Wiggy, you look like you want to say something. Uh, no, I'm just reading some of the suggestions of you and a thong on the elliptical. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that in the next podcast. I'll get some wireless headsets and I'll do that in the back. All right, I'll, 
I'll get my assless chaps out. We'll do this. You're you're already shirtless, so that's half the battle right there. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, um, what else do we want to talk about with uh, with gears? I, I I mean I know they're bringing back the retro and the sawed off, but it, uh, uh, I, I heard from from Arctic Zyn and I'll, I'll include a link to his video in the description. It's a it's a 25 minute video just talking all about gears information. I definitely recommend going to check it out if you're interested in it. But uh, the retro and the sawed off are coming back. They're not verbatim. They're not like the a copy and paste is what he said of the original ones. Uh, they're they're going to have some tweaks to it. So I guess that's good. I mean, I hate the retro Lancer sawed off. I don't really care about, but uh, um, I guess it's good that they're making tweaks to it. It's not the same gun, uh, but uh, that's one of the things I've noticed. And the other thing is no more active reloads. You don't get uh, damage buffs anymore. So that uh, that'll be interesting. It kind of I like the dynamic of the active reload. Like, I like trying to get it in the middle of a firefight. It's just fun hitting it. But um, at the same time, yeah, I guess there is kind of an inconsistency whenever you have, like, a, a, a damn, up a powered-up shotgun versus the enemy. That's, that's when you time your reload, right? Yes. Into that little yes. space. That's an active yeah. reload. The so whenever you, so whenever, whenever that happens, you get a damage bonus? Yes. yes. Yeah. For the, for the shells that you reload in. They're taking that away. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The reason for that is consistency because you'll be running around and maybe you have the damage buff and the other guy doesn't. All of a sudden you get downed immediately even though you both hit each other at the same range, something like that. Um, it, for me, it wasn't a, a big deal, but I guess they just want to make everything even keel. Yeah. And that that's fine. I, I think that's okay. I, it doesn't bother me either way, but uh, it's fine. And, it, and I think from a competitive standpoint, I think a lot of people would like to see that as well. Okay, so they're removing the stopping power. They're removing the active reload bonus. <clears throat> so does this sound like to you guys that they're they're kind of going the Call of Duty route with making it more accessible to more players? No, the removal of no, stopping power the makes it. Way. Yeah, removing of stopping power makes the game harder. Um, harder. Because if okay. you're because for for a veteran player, if somebody really knows how to use the shotgun. Um, you can get in close real quickly and shoot somebody and instantly kill them. You don't have that same ability with a rifle. It takes a lot of fire to take somebody down with a rifle. Uh, that's why they added in the stopping power, to separate, to put some distance between somebody using a shotgun and somebody using a rifle. Oh, okay. um, but now this is this is where I don't fully believe it. Yeah, like I can't see any gaming company in the industry or in the environment they were at taking something more difficult that they'd made slightly more accessible beforehand. Because the the sales are just too vast to the casual market. I think it's because they switch. Maybe it's because they switch companies. They're not switch companies, but switch developers. Maybe they're willing to give it a try. But uh, yeah, it is kind of strange. Normally, no, no, it's no, Epic Games are still doing the um, multiplayer. multiplayer. Oh, are they? People oh, can yeah, fly. Yeah, people campaign. can fly that are oh, doing the campaign. Oh shit! Well then, I don't know what the hell's going on then. I don't know what made them. It'd be amazing if they do. It'd be pretty awesome if they really do go the other direction. Um, but we'll what, was it, Cliffy, what was it, Cliffy? What was it, Cliffy? Bill said that um, it was something like, I don't know, it, it was some ridiculously low percentage. I'm not going to quote it because it would be wrong what I quote, but it was some ridiculously low percentage that actually prestiged in gears over the total people who picked up the game. It was a ridiculously low well, percentage. It was like five percent or something daft like that who well, have actually prestiged. To be fair, you know that tells you to be how big the casual uh, population <laughs> actually is. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just about to say. Like, you have, you know, so many people that played it, and then there were some veterans that got turned off because, you know, the retro sawed off and shit like that. So they were really upset about it, and they stopped playing and that. But you, you're right with the casual player base just completely getting cut off on there. So, Wiggy, I, just, just I guess, from uh, from your perspective, how much Gears of War 3 do you think you played? Um, I don't know. Probably about... 15 or 20 hours. What 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 turned you off about the game? What uh, what made you uh, kind of switch out of that to something else? Uh, to be honest, it, I never saw myself improving. Mm -hmm. I, I made the same mistakes over and over because, you know, I'm I, I played so much Call of Duty. I get Call of Duty stuck in my head, mm -hmm. and I would you know, and I would switch back and forth, which to my detriment is the reason why I probably didn't stick with it. Mm -hmm. If I probably had one game to play and that was Gears, I probably would eventually get good at it, but that's the main thing. It's just I never really got good enough with it to have any fun, and if it's frustrating for so long, yeah, that's why I didn't really stay with it. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that makes sense. That's one of the, I guess, that's one of the things that I actually do find, if I find, like, the core 
concept of the game is fun. It's one of the things I really like about it. Like um, that's what really turned me on about Gears is it was so difficult, and it was like the challenge of of, of trying to do trying to get better at that game. That's what. And the other thing was the team dynamic. I, I really, at least in terms of console play, I hadn't seen anything that really involved that much of a team dynamic uh, in any other game. Uh, even like I played with a lot of form boys in Call of Duty. Uh, but this is completely uh, another level. You really do have to have really good teamwork, and, and map control is super key. So that's that's um, one of the things that really drew me into it. But I can understand. I mean, if it, it takes a while to get good at that game, um, and if you're sitting there getting killed all the time, and yeah, uh, or, or just not having a fun experience in the early early hours or early stages, I can see how that can turn a lot of people off. Because I think the player base dropped. Pretty quickly oh, yeah. after it first launched. Yeah. Well, if if you're there and you come from COD and you're the you're the casual player, you're, you're whoever wants to pick up the game to begin with, you start out with your lancer, you sit there down a wall, you start shooting, you realise that the person's not quite dying as fast as you want them to, mm -hmm. and then you come across some wall bouncer who bounce, 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 shotguns you in the face and runs onto the next guy. You're just gonna sit there and think, oh, wow, I put that, fifty that bullets rubbish. in half. Yeah. 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 I don't know how I have. I mean, I know I've seen y'all do it with the wall bouncing. That blew my mind every time. I'm like, that's got to be a fucking. That's got to be some kind of hack or something. I don't know how the fuck they do that. Mm. It just takes time. But I think the best solution would be matchmaking based on how they're doing it, or how they did it in Halo Three, and hopefully, if it works in Black Ops Two, that that same kind of concept. All the dogs are barking. Yeah. That's, um, that's ranked though. Ranked does that. Ranked is true does skill. It, 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 I've yeah, never ranked, really noticed. Ranked is true skill, but the population's so, so low, low it doesn't really. Is now mine are, mine are going now, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I heard them talk about that, but uh, I never really. I felt like I was paired against people from all over the spectrum. Like it, I never really felt like I was paired up against people um, that were consistent with my skill whenever I did play ranked. But uh, maybe there just wasn't a large enough player pool. Because ranked versus quick match, I mean, there was a huge difference in, in the player population. Yeah. And, and see, the other thing about it is, you know, like, you know, with the controls and like the, the neat things that you do. <laughs> You can still hear that? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, sounds, it sounds like they're just in, a, in an epic battle to the death right now. <laughs> it's just fucking the little bouncing. weenie piranhas in there. <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, you know, like with like Street Fighter, you know how you had to have the combinations and stuff yeah. to, make, to do the really cool stuff? That's kind of the way I, I felt with Gears, that you had to do certain combinations in order to do things right. Mm -hmm. And I never could learn how to do that. Before. You know, I was... Time. Yeah, I was more of the, you know, get myself into a position, lay down the trigger until they're dead. And that's that's usually when I would get the most frustrated because I'm like, I, I beat this guy. He rolled up on me and blasted me once in the face with a shotgun, and now I'm dead? Fuck that. Fuck that. Yeah. Well, there was, there was the casual playlist, wasn't there, in Gears when he first released? And I know Fonzie in the EU forum, he, um, he was playing it that quite a lot. Because he picked up the game after us, and we were obviously way past the level needed. And he was absolutely stomping it, like 20-something to pretty much zero. Mm -hmm. And then he made the jump into the main lot and just got completely stomped on for at least the first, you know, few days. Mm -hmm. he, he got he got very, very, you know, uh, adequate at the game afterwards. He was, he was fine and completely competent. But he jumped between the casual plays and suddenly... Shit. <laughs> Do you still have legs? <laughs> yeah, they're fighting over stuff. Yeah, this is this is, a, this is going well. A lot of ambient noise. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but if the jump from the casual playlist to suddenly up against some wall bouncer that knows what he's doing was just so vast. Yeah, because it you takes know, just learning the the range at which you can even initiate a wall bounce versus a roll. Like like just yeah. getting good at that, knowing when to. Because a lot of times people will wall bounce around, not even know what they're doing. They just smash the A button, and that's good and all. But if you can't, sh you might be avoiding shots. But if you can't fire back, like that's yeah. another problem. It, it really takes, and that's I said it before, but that's why I, I, I like the game so much. Is it, it takes a while to get used to it. With Call of Duty, um, there, like I know, there's like a, a negative. Um, attitude that's got uh, that call of duty doesn't take any skill I, i'll say that i think i said this last podcast it, it it's the fastest um 
everybody's doing the head bounce. I think it's got the lowest learning curve, but you still need to learn map routes. You need to learn, you know, to, to identify where people are coming from. But even still, it, it got to the point where it just, there was nothing left for me to really learn in that game, I guess. It just didn't seem like a challenge anymore. Uh, but with uh, Gears of War, it was just something new and something different. But uh, Stabby, why don't you go said something? With yeah, with your head bob. Yeah, come on, what? Mr. Gears guy. What's going on? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know because you hear that I'm ball just, bearing rolling I'm around just, in your I'm head. Just bouncing around. <laughs> Some? Maybe? <laughs> Did you really weren't listening? I really Bueller. wasn't listening. Bueller. <laughs> 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 we were talking about gears just after. This is your segment, for oh, God's oh, yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Oh yeah, gears, love it. Well, it, it oh, just anything. What, what what was your general thoughts? Just on what you've seen so far. What what's the? What, I guess real quickly. What are the highlights and lowlights from what you've seen with Gears Judgment? Uh, highlights. Um. Your hair. What about my hair? It's hard highlights. to pick out the highlights in the video in that short little free for all. Mm. The maps look nice. The breach mm -hmm. shot looks cool. Um, definitely think it's gonna overtake. Sniper. Sniper looks obsolete on most maps, even though I was talking about long shot would be better at, you know, longer distances. Mm -hmm. um, but Retro is back. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about the overhand toss. I'm not sure about how I feel about the D-pad being useless now. I'm not sure the whole control scheme being completely turned around and made easier for people. Um, so you um, throw your grenades overhand now instead of um, underhand? If, if you tap the, the left yeah. bumper, which was, I think it was um, TACCOM was what it yes. was assigned that to. Um, so now if, if I'm walking up to you and I have grenades and I just hit the left bumper, boom, I throw an aid at you overhand. But if I hold onto it, I, I swing it around and then I let go and I throw it. So right. um, before you had to actually switch to it, and Random was actually talking about this, and he said it kind of made more of a strategy. Like, you know, if you're playing a game and you see somebody there, you have to actually take out your nades and leave yourself vulnerable if somebody comes up to you. Like if... if yeah. You know, you come running at me with a shotgun, I have my nades out, well, I've only got one choice. Try and stick you with it. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, I'm fucked. But now, it just looks like all you gotta do is hit Spam a button. Spam it. And, mm -hmm. and if it throws, and it, it, it throws, and it actually hits you, like, straight on, it sticks to you and blows you up. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, no, it wasn't in the video, but it was mentioned by uh, Pete Nub. Um, no sticking to, like, no nade planting, which I think is awesome. At first, I was like, oh, damn, that sucks. Then I thought about it. I was like, man, that really slows down gameplay. Like, um, blood drive. Like Arctic was saying in his video, blood drive. Um, yeah. Jacinto, when you because you got two nade spawns on that map, so you know you got you, you tagging them to a wall, and then you're just gonna wait up there. You're just gonna wait for thresh somebody to run. Thresh in the grenades. Yeah, exactly. you don't you don't ever attack thresh ball grenades without jumping past it, or you dive in and then jump back every yeah. single corner that you go around. Yeah. Or throw a smoke, you know, whichever one you can yeah. do. But um, I like that. Um, the Vulcan scared me, um, but Arctic said that you move incredibly slow with it, which would make fucking sense. Mm -hmm. um, you can't take cover with it. Awesome. Um, and you can't wall bounce with it because you can't take cover, so you can't like yeah. move. Because wall bouncing, <clears throat> in Gears 1, you moved at a high rate of speed. Gears 2, they slowed down your player movement, but your wall bouncing, I think, was the same. So people or rolling was the same. So you, everybody would roll or wall bounce because it was the same movement, but your running was actually slower. Um, so that effectively made if you wall bounce with a if there was a heavy weapon, you'd actually move a lot faster than running with it. Um, but most of the stuff I saw was negative. Has hmm. anyone heard anything about whether it was or oh, what deadies might have anything to do with Gears Judgment? dedicated servers i haven't heard anything at all i don't know what the stance on that is i, I guess it depends on if they made money or not if they think they did because i imagine it, it takes some amount of finance to keep those up and running um maybe they maybe it's gonna they're gonna continue with it or maybe well, they'll that's all to microsoft really because it wasn't epic that was that, it wasn't epic that yep. had the service like i thought it was it's actually microsoft so if microsoft yep. wasn't getting their money oh the Microsoft yeah. the Microsoft's service. like, well, fuck you guys. I didn't make any money off this. So. I hope. Well, I hope so. I mean, I think the game initially sold really well, but I, I think that the player base just died off fairly quickly. Um, so uh, we'll wait and see. You kind of saw that with Hypha Station as well. Like, the first, well, I think the second one got really big, and then after that, uh, did they even make it to Hypha Station nope. 3? Not that I know of. Yeah, that. I know one, of, one of the things that I'm very worried about population wise is. If you think Gears 3 last year was released, it was around about this time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, was it 21st of September, something like that? Yes. Um, yes. 
this time around, if it sticks to the release date, it's after COD. The big thing was last year, it was before COD. So everyone was towards the end of the that version of the COD cycle. They were maybe getting a bit bored of it. So they picked up gears for a change of pace this time. COD's only just started. People will be getting it for Christmas. No, Three it's months down the line, they'll still be it's playing it. The release date's in spring, isn't it? Yeah, it's in March. So it'll be the March after Black Ops 2. So if Black Ops 2 but completely fucking tanks, then good. Well, that, that's pending on that. But one thing I, I think that was going against Gears um, being released in September was that when that was released, that was one of the biggest game releases of a bunch of different games. There was um, Dead Island, Arkham City, uh, the, the new Assassin's Creed. There was a Bad Comp or Battlefield 3. Uh, and obviously Modern Warfare, or was it Modern Warfare? Yeah, Modern Warfare 3. There was a ton of games released within about a month or a month and a half from Gears. Uh, Skyrim came out. So, I mean, there was a lot of games competing for, like, Gears, I think Gears did a good job when it came out when it did because a lot of people picked it up. But then about a month and a half afterwards, people that, like, maybe Wiggy, like, from from his standpoint, he's getting tired of the game. There's a ton of new games that just came out, and they, they're, yeah. they're out. If you pick up Gears of War in March, Judgment, um, there's not going to be as many games for contention. If you're picking it up then, That's true. you're going to be playing it for a little bit. And, and then you like it, or if you want to get better at it, I feel like you're going to stick with it a little bit longer. And you've already made your decision by that point if you're sticking with Black Ops 2 or not. Absolutely. And even still, that it's been out for a while. It's been out since November all the way to March. So yeah. I feel like even even if you do like the game, um, I, if, if I love the game, I still feel like I might get a little fatigue in it and I might want to switch it up. So I think actually it's a, it's a good time uh, to be released. Maybe. So that's true. I hope. I mean, I hope so. I, I, that's because whenever the the population dies, it just kills the game. Yeah. Um, and but, you you would think with a March release, knowing that school ends in June, that would be the time for it to ramp up going into the summertime. Yeah. The, the, the typically I've noticed there's there's two big release periods. There's November, which is right before the Christmas season, and then there's that March time frame. Because I remember Battlefield had a similar model. Uh, to try to compete with COD originally. Bad Company 2 released released in March to try to, I guess, pick up all the people getting tired of Call of Duty, or I guess it was Black Ops at the time. Um, so they, normally they have a resurgence of games around that time frame as well. So I hope that line of thinking, and, and that, I, I'm hoping that's why another reason why Gears of War 3 kind of dropped off a little bit, because there was a ton of games that was released um, between when Gears was released and, and uh, Modern Warfare 3. So hopefully that'll change things around. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, hopefully it's good. But if, if there's anything else that you guys want to talk about, we can switch it up uh, to talk about something else. I, yeah. I, I saw the latest Assassin's Creed 3 trailer. Mm -hmm. That game looks really interesting, especially with the new direction they've gone with it. What it's, do you mean it's, new direction? Hang on. Well, it's it's American Revolution. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's, so, it's, it's modern. It's more, it's, well, it's more modern. Guns. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying. It's mo like I yeah. did air quotes. You can't see me, but... It, no yeah. the Italian assassino. Yeah. It's, yeah. The um I didn't Yeah, go ahead. Give you give your best American impression. Come on. Let's do this. No. Yeah. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> We're in the here. Okay, sorry. Yeah. The, um, but I I'm um are you interested in that game, Wiggy? I have I haven't been real <laughs> real big on Assassin's Creed for a while now. Um, I never really played the other two, but you know, just I don't know. It may be something that I pick up just because it's something that I've never played before. I think that's the direction I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to start playing games that I don't normally play, like the Arkham Asylum. That actually looks like something, because Dustin it's picked it up, and he, he told me I need to play that. It's a fun um, Silent? if you're a big Batman fan, especially yeah. Batman the Animated Series. I don't know if you ever watched that at yeah. all. He told me that Mark Hamill's the voice of the Joker. Mark Hamill's the voice of the Joker, and I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the guy who did the voice of Batman from the animated series is there as well. Yeah. It's I, actually I, really well done for a bat, for a comic book video. Was a, Asylum yeah. was a really, really good game. A mm -hmm. really good game. I think that's going to be the one thing that saves me from gaming altogether because I don't think I can continue. While I like Call of Duty and I'm going to play Black Ops 2, I don't think I can continue just playing the same game over and over unless yeah. I, I get new games that I'm going to play. I'm probably just going to burn out from playing games all together. Mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Borderlands 2. Borderlands. Um, that, like that, Borderlands that actually, I mentioned that in the other video. I'm actually interested in that too. Stabby isn't just no, one we of can, We can all right. talk about Borderlands 2 and how crappy that motherfucking game's going to be. I, I don't understand. Wait, wait, wait. Has Stabby not even seen Wim Away? The trailer? I mean, sir, you watch that trailer and you're, that's an automatic buy. 
Wait, what? best trailer. I haven't. I haven't looked at anything as a Borderlands. He doesn't. Too. He has no interest. In I have absolutely right. zero. Less than zero. Negative interest in is, Borderlands. Is there anybody in the stream right now? Well, what is your op opinion of, of Borderlands Two? Yeah. Yep. We got we got a yep. couple people. There you go. Pretty Maybe. sure. Yep. I'm pretty sure Weedy's on my side with this. Stab you. Shut the hell up. <laughs> you, may, you may be out on that limb all alone, buddy. I, I I love I love games that focus on co-op and it's got kind of the loot drop dynamic from Diablo, except it's it's fun. Like it's, it's fun <laughs> to play. Wait, it, just... it doesn't feel like a grind as much. Um, and I like the style, like the artistic style. And what are those bots called? The little the Flat traps. Yeah, I, I, I just like the little tongue-in-cheek humor that they have in that game. Um, so See, yeah. that that sounds like a hooker I knew once. Clap trap. <laughs> <laughs> the, I will. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I will say that the concept of Borderlands is fun. Four player co op loot, you know, definitely gets harder or mm -hmm. gets, you know, better the more people are playing. Um, I just, I played it solo. It was boring <laughs> as hell. I didn't like the story. Well, that. Uh, hang on, hang on. I did play <laughs> somewhat co op, but mo for the most part, I did all by myself. Um, the artistic I style completely turned me off. Complete, what? Completely turned me off. It's different. I mean, it's nice that they're actually doing... I mean, I know cell shading has been done kind of... I'm not a fan of it at all. I think it looks crappy. I think it looks terrible. Like, it's just not something I'm for. I like... I think it matches the comedy they're trying to do. Yeah. That whole kind of, like... like. Um... See, I like Scanner Darkly, so that, that shading and stuff, that looks cool to me. Yeah. That's a, I, I like it, and I like to see it come back. But I, if you played the game mostly solo, I mean, that's a big, <laughs> it's a big problem. That's probably why um, it wasn't as fun in terms of gameplay. I will admit that I wasn't really crazy with how the game ended. It's kind of anticlimactic. It wasn't really. Um, <laughs> it was a little. Oh no! Now you've ruined it. Fuck. I was going to play that this weekend. Yeah, you're going to play all of Borderlands in one weekend. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't even think you need to play Borderlands to play Borderlands 2. I think it's, like, set. That's what yeah. they said. They said one has nothing to do with the other. Well, it's I think just... it's on the same planet. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, there may be some returning characters, but yeah, it's they're... not the, not the yeah. same story. So, I, I mean, I like it. It's, like, a fun take on... Although it's on another planet, it's like post-apocalyptic, kind of like um, mad. I just want to play as the big muscular beefy dude. Yeah, like those. I mean, and I guess the other <laughs> the other thing. I can't relate, obviously. <laughs> the, um, well, take off your shirt and let the let the audience. Oh show. no! Don't um, make me do it. Um, the the other thing that might help the game, I guess, if you get kind of tired with it, is I feel like the skill trees. <laughs> that's an image I'm not going to get out of my head anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> the. Um, the the skill trees aren't very in depth, I guess. They're kind of simple, which makes sense for I guess for a console. But I would like to see them a little bit more fully meshed out, a little bit more complex. I think that would add a little bit more to the game. I don't know what Stabby's doing over there. What? I don't see him on the Skype call, so every so often I see him bobbing his head and and and, and doing something weird. I wasn't um, doing any. Jesus. Just ridiculous. <laughs> Wiggy. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that's what you meant. The kids Damn. show. Um, so yeah, no, I'm looking forward to Borderlands 2. Stabby, I suggest at least renting it and playing with the party of four. Oh, my brother's gonna, my brother's gonna buy it. He's, it's, okay. I think it comes out the 20th, right? Comes out soon. I know I'm getting it. I think it's the 20th because it's the, it's a day before his birthday. All right. So. Uh, okay. Well then, let's let's wrap up one last uh, one last topic first. I think. The um, I was I was looking through a couple of older games I've played, and I kind of realized, uh, at least this current generation of games, there's not really any games that resonate with me the same as a lot of games that I played, like say on the N64, the PlayStation One, the PlayStation Two, um, and I don't know if it's because of nostalgia, uh, or or what, but I I, I mean I, I kind of feel like games don't make as big of an, you know, <laughs> games don't make as big of an impact. Uh, uh, at least on they do it, if you throw them far enough. Ooh. <laughs> so I was just wondering. I mean, do you guys feel like uh, the industry in general? Do you feel like the way it's trending? It, it, uh, is there still innovation in a lot of games? Are there games that you guys are still really enjoying to this day, or do you kind of feel like it's getting repetitive? Or I think what were you saying before, BA? You think it's a difference between innovation and sales? Is what you? Were? Yeah. Um. It, it's the for me it's a bit of the um, EA a very good slash bad depending on how you're doing it at making a business out of video games I mean you'd have take Zelda mm -hmm. Zelda had one on the NES 
it, and had one on the SNES. It then had maybe two on the N64. Yeah, it had two. But the, the, the Ocarina of Time. The, the releasing games for each new generation, that's big jumps between each one. The consumer doesn't have a problem with that. You know, Ocarina of Time was one of the, my favourite games that I've ever played. Um, you get COD. How many CODs have we had now on the Xbox generation? You get uh, one too many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they, everything now has a sequel. Everything that is a good game has a sequel. Borderlands, I'd say, is up there in my favourite games that I've played. But you know that that one was a success, therefore there's going to be a two. Yeah. There's, it's, we're definitely, I think, right now plagued by just sequels upon sequels. Sometimes they're good, um, but I, I feel like a lot of times it's starting to get a little watered down. And I can't think, I was looking at the list, the other thing I've noticed is that the Xbox 360 exclusives suck. Like, um, I was, uh, like, I think I have it right here. Like, if you compare PlayStation 3 to Xbox in terms of exclusives, um, Xbox has Halo, Gears of War, Saints Row, and Left 4 Dead, and, and Call of Duty 2. Just Saints Call of Row, Duty 2. Saints Row is not just exclusive, is it? I think it is. I think it's only on, on Xbox. It's on. I, I know 3 is on PC, but... Well, I, I'm talking about between PS3 and, and oh, okay. Xbox 60. Um, you go over to PlayStation 3, it's got like Resistance, Metal Gear Solid, Infamous, God of War, Resident Uncharted... Link. Um, Red, all those all those different games. That's another thing that kind of I didn't even think about it until now. Even though I always play Xbox 360, but a lot of the the exclusives, um, a lot of like the big franchise franchises that's supposed to establish the ah, Xbox. Killzone. And Killzone, yeah. Killzone, I mean, yeah. Mass Effect. It's it's uh, Mass Effect Three. Was no, Mass Effect Three. Oh, was yeah. it? A, okay, I I saw somebody post it in the chat. That's why I, was, yeah. I didn't play it. So. Yeah. I, I hear my only hope is, and as much as it's going to cost, I should be dreading it. I, I'm hoping that you know, with next generation consoles, maybe we'll see something new. That's yeah. other than that, I think it's just going to be friggin' copy and paste heaven. I think I think Kingdom I've heard Hearts. one of the I heard Kingdom. Yeah, I was going to say Kingdom. I was going to talk about that. Thanks, Virgo. Second. Virgo, that's actually one of my favorite games of all time. Is uh, is Kingdom Hearts. Um, but the uh, I think I heard somewhere that that a lot of companies aren't taking risks this late in the generation, and it's when the yeah. new technology comes out uh, that's yeah. when they're going to start being a little bit more innovative. But even still, looking over the entire course of this generation, uh, games that really stuck out in my mind that I'm really going to remember. The only one I can really think of off the top of my head, what is it, buddy? The um, is Call of Duty 2, the campaign. Like when I played that, that back then Call of Duty 2, one I didn't play a lot of military shooters. But you weren't like this one-man Rambo trying to stop a nuclear explosion, killing the entire world or starting World War Three or whatever it was. It was just you trying to fight in, in World War Two. You were a small part, and it, it 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 the story I felt was was it wasn't like a Michael Bay style thing. It was just a little bit better. It was more grounded, I guess. And and, and the entire Call of Duty series. That's the only game that I really enjoyed the single player the most, and I actually remember uh, COD Four. I, I don't remember much from that. I remember you. Some what's his name handing you the pistol at the very end of the game and you shooting that one, off, dude. Um, and a lot of the other single player campaigns from COD are forgettable at best, for me at least. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. for for me the most memorable thing in COD Four was the the sniper sequence. Yeah, that that, that that's the other thing too. That was kind of cool. That was different for its time. Um, <sighs> that, uh, but yeah, everything else is. Um, I don't know. I mean, is there any games on this current generation that you're like, yeah, that's that's an awesome game. I'm gonna remember playing it for for a while now. Full Viva Pinata. I, I I know, really, really. No. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm really trying I, to think. The only one that I got nothing. Fallout on there. Fallout, okay, Fallout yeah, was Fallout. a really good game. Fallout Three, anyway. And it was something completely different. I'm sure a lot of people would probably say Skyrim because it was such yeah. a leap over you know the the other Elder Scrolls games. But even with Fallout, a lot of things, a lot of elements from that game do run similar to the original one. It's just better graphics, like a lot of a lot of like how you can convince people to do stuff. Like it, you don't have to fight people; you can you can talk to them to, and convince them to do stuff. Those elements existed in the original Fallout. Um, so it was a good game. I do think it, it was pretty awesome. But it's a lot easier for me to come up with games um, from previous generations, yeah. like Metal Gear Solid One, uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, Devil May Cry, uh, Golden Eye. Cool. Uh, you mentioned Ocarina okay. of Time, like uh, absolute best game, one of my favorite games of all time. 
Uh, Black was the PlayStation 2 game, which it, I'm surprised it didn't get as popular as it did. The Resident Evil, before yeah. it became this action franchise, the Resident Evil 3. I didn't play 3, but 1 and 2, I liked Resident Evil. 3 was pretty much like, just like 2, well, I, I can't say just like 2, but it was basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want Street still. Fighter. Yeah, yeah. Street Fighter Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Um, Mortal Kombat, Star Fox 64, Mario 64. Oh, Jet- I would love a next generation Star Fox. I don't that know. was Mario awesome. Kart. Make money immediately. Mario Kart. Super Smash Pokemon. Brothers. Yeah. Like, I, it, 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 it seems strange that it's a lot harder to come up with games in this generation where the technology is at its peak, at least in terms of the consoles, but I can't really come up with the same names and same same as many games as quickly as I can well, previous generations. Well, well, here's an example. So one of the you know most stoic franchises out there, they make new new versions of it, and it seems like it's gotten worse and worse, and that's the Tomb Raider games. Uh, they have totally yeah. killed that game. I think, well, you know what happened was it was good on the, all the way up until PlayStation. I think I think they took a break after PlayStation 1 and they switched developers I believe because it, it just changed like they tried to change it and then it became because Laura Croft became like this big sex symbol in terms of video See? Games. Angelina killed her yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah that, I mean I since I mean the original Tomb Raider were fun but then um, like uh, BA was saying before just sequels it was successful yeah. so they, the sequels ran it to the ground yeah. um, so I, I mean it's um I don't know. I, I don't know if maybe it's nostalgia. It's just because I experienced it when I was younger, and, and, and it was new to me. That's why it sticks with me like it does. But I just feel like this generation, games just aren't as a... The other thing is I'm playing a lot more multiplayer games, so maybe that's the other thing as well that's kind of that, affecting. And were there really that many games... Be, were there really that many game companies back then, too? Like, as much as there are today? There were a ton. Like, if you look back... But like, I mean, early, like, big, 90, like big titles i'm oh, not talking okay. about like the ones that just they, slipped under oh, they had some weird like there's a ton of companies back then and they they made like the weirdest games i watched one game where it was like um it, it was like this weird porno style a lot of like the when the cd first came out it was uh it was like choose your own adventure and they would record real people acting and you would like choose different things that would go around and that was supposed to be this own gaming franchise and that died out real quickly uh, there was a there was a ton of different companies doing the wildest things. Like what was the what was it on Atari? The Custard's Last Stand. Did you guys ever see that game? Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, games like that. I mean, there was a lot of games, a lot of little companies back then, um, and a lot of them were doing pretty good things. But yeah, I, video games wasn't uh, they, they weren't as prof- profitable as they were today or are today. So there's much much bigger mm-hmm. companies out. But then you would think that the quality in turn would would correlate with that. You would think. Well, but, with uh, now now you got more stuff, more programming, um, more bugs. Yeah, well, you can you can argue that it, it takes longer to make games, but then look at Minecraft. That is like that's a game that could have been put on probably like the N sixty four or the, yeah, uh, but it's not like that's like I'm saying. There's uh oh, what happened to like a boss? Where did he go? We'll try, bring, we'll try to bring him back in. Maybe now, maybe now. Boss saw that he was online. He's like, up, oh, gotta go to work. I'll see if I can add him in in a second. Let's but um, everybody's saying um, Uncharted on uh, PS3. I never played it, uh, even though I own a PS3. I guess I'm doing myself an injustice by never playing it. Um, you said multiplayer games kill it. Smoke was saying um, multiplayer more multiplayer means less uh, games bought because you're playing them for a lot longer. That's one of the things. Um, I think. But even Sorry. still, I mean, I mean. Sorry yeah. about my internet kind of shit. The, uh, but I mean, guys in the stream. Take PlayStation 3 out of it, because I just don't play PlayStation 3. I mean, at Xbox, what's what's the single-player game you can think of that were really... Arkham City, Arkham Asylum. Arkham wow. City, Arkham Asylum, and then maybe the Gears of War 1 campaign are the only things that really stick out with me, and, the, and Call of Duty 2, in terms of campaign, that are, are really, really enjoyed. Gears of War 1 didn't have multiplayer? It did, it, but the story but, was... Yeah. That, that's what sold, sells a lot of copies on Gears. Yes, that's what, well, that's yeah. what got a lot of people into Gears, I think, was this... The I'm um, so yeah, it was uh, uh, that. That's it. I mean, but I can I could just ring off names from other things. Like one of the games I, I might do a let's play for the channel, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. I don't know if you guys ever played that game, uh, but that like that game had it didn't have the biggest budget in the world, but it had really good voice acting and it did a lot with with what it had. And it was a, it was an interesting premise and it had really good game mechanics. And you don't you don't really see games. I don't know, just establishing really good quality and being oh. different and dead space i like the first one i like 
I liked I like the second it. one until somebody stopped fucking playing it. Well, you don't know if I stopped or not. I just oh, haven't. I know you stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's basically... I think the other thing we run into with these games, too, is, you know, most of these little companies are bought by the big companies, and the big companies say, well, we got to get a game out there. So you yeah. don't have the, yeah. the time to develop them the way you want to because we got a bottom line we have to keep. Yeah. Shareholders have got to keep happy. That's right. So, I mean, do, I mean, so do you think then, and if it, so where do you think games are going? I mean, are you optimistic about the perspective or the, the, where they're going? Yeah. I, I think if they bring in, you know, because, I mean, not that any of it's been confirmed, but they talk about, you know, the 360 console instead of having, you know, hard, the hard disk that it's going to be cloud gaming. I think that's going to take out a lot of the problems that, you know, people have with online gaming. If, 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 mm-hmm. if, if your hardware is not what is supporting your, your game running smoothly, if it's actually on a server that you, you're actually connected to, that your box is connected to, then, you know, maybe that, that's going to give us the flexibility to try more games but, and to but, experience but games the way they want them to, us to experience. Here's, here's a big problem. OnLive does that, and they just went bankrupt or they just got bought out by somebody else. But what OnLive does, if you guys aren't familiar, um, it's cloud gaming. That All the hardware is on their side. So you can have a netbook, like a real crappy, maybe a netbook can't do it, but you can have a really crappy low-end laptop and as long as it has the necessary, um, just a couple necessary programs, and you have a large enough, or the the uh, enough bandwidth, you can play high end games because um, they're basically streaming it to you, and, and they yeah. have a really effective compression uh, compression algorithm that allows you to you know, real quickly type in whatever commands you want, and, and it relays it very quickly. Um, but uh, I guess maybe it's one of those types of uh, technologies that are just too new and it doesn't catch on. But one right. of the issues is all if, if, don't own the if disc, Microsoft had taken that on. They would have yeah. run away with it. But it's just because it wasn't Microsoft, it wasn't PlayStation, it wasn't Apple, it wasn't one of the big players. That's that's my view. But here's the thing: you don't own the disc, and and, and here was the problem for a lot of people who had on live. If that company goes bankrupt, all your where, games are gone. All your games are gone. Yep. If you lose your internet for some reason, either because they're having a hardware malfunction, or if you're having some type of problem with your internet, you can't play any games. So I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on with this cloud gaming but if it's 100 percent on their side if you don't have some type of at least something that's that's stored on your side that's going to be at least for me it's going to be a bitch because if if for some reason my internet cuts out or if they're having some type of issue or if they want to transfer to something else where are my games in, in that type of situation um so yeah i'm not super crazy about about cloud gaming it's a cool concept like it has possibilities but I want something on my end just in case yeah. their shit messes up, messes up. That's what I was going to say when Wiggs was doing, uh, talking about it. I was like, so now there's people, you know, who don't have internet connection or don't have this. You know, if, if that's if that's the route that that's going to go, that everybody, if you, I mean, it's never going to, well, never, but eventually, super far down the road it might happen. But if that were to happen and, you know, you don't have internet connection for whatever reason, you know, or you just want to go and hang out with your friends and play. You can't do that. I mean, think about like, I mean, I'm probably I'm the youngest one here, so going back to my friend's house, with my Xbox or my uh, you know, whatever, and hooking up a LAN center and playing Halo Two. It's like three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. You couldn't do that with that type of technology because you yeah. wouldn't have the game. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we'll see. I. I feel, I don't know, I, even though I guess I am playing more multiplayer games, and there are indie developers coming out, putting out good stuff like Minecraft and, and, and like uh, Limbo. DayZ. Yeah, yeah Daisy. Uh, games like that, there are, are those things coming out. But by and large, I really can't think, at least from a single-player standpoint, I think it's Dead Space. Um, what were the other games? I can't even remember. Call, uh, Call of Duty 2, Gears. There's a couple of games, but I can list off a ton of games from previous generations, like just... They did just stick with me a lot more, so I don't. Maybe that'll change. Um, give us the give us the seven twenty or whatever they're gonna call it, and I, I heard see what happens. Just today on IGN, I heard there might be a delay. The the whatever they use for the graphics chip, there seems to be some hardware issue, and it might delay from a fall release. So I don't know. I feel like wah, wah, wah. Too long. I, I, I this generation. When did it start? Two thousand five. Two thousand. Yeah. It's it was been whenever that came out. 
it's been out a long time, and I feel like they need to hurry it up and switch switch devices. It's it's been on yeah. There, so at this point, it's a race to see who can get theirs out first: PS3 or Xbox. The two the two things that I think made because I think Xbox has beaten PlayStation, or they were. I don't know if they still are now, but I think yeah, the two things that that kind of helped Xbox in the states over the PlayStation 3 was the release date, just having that next gen out before PlayStation, and the for me uh, the network. Even though you had well, support, and the fact that the PS3 when it first came out was four ninety nine. Yeah, I was about that to say right. on the cost. That cost was just ridiculous. That was ridiculous. They should have known better than that. That was a little too much. So yeah, that was um. All y'all I got mentioned in the. Uh oh. Uh, they're having they're a having a fight because VTI I, 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 I came in, and um I said hello and I didn't say hi to Virgo. And then Campbell was like, fuck you, bitches. I got mentioned on stream, so that's what's going on. <laughs> that's true. On. Okay. Yeah. Subi said, uh, don't forget Red Ring. So it that's is. true. Oh, that's yeah, true. Xbox had the, the lowest quality. But even still, I mean, after I'm not talking about if you, you put them next to each other, but I'm talking about what drove sales because people didn't really know mm-hmm. about Red Ring initially. Um, yeah. So it's uh, – I, I will admit that the PlayStation 3's hardware is far more reliable than the Xbox. But the the network just for me is, is a big deal. Being able to to do Xbox parties that's that's huge. That's, yeah. So yeah. And they and they they doubled down on that with the fact that they bought Skype. Yeah. If they can use the codex, the the audio codex. Wait, who, who bought Skype? Skype? Microsoft. Okay. X, Microsoft. Yeah. Okay. So it comes standard on Windows 8, I believe. So that's uh, if they can find a way to implement that into the Xbox that's... 720 or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, it is standard. I got the release preview, oh, and it's on yeah. there. That's, uh, that's something I wanted to talk about. Um, well, not the whole subject, but um, now that you brought that up, have you guys played any um, Xbox game and not been in party chat? Have you heard how terrible it sounds? The yeah. in-game codex or the in-game audio? It's horrible. It it's, sucks. It's yeah. so bad. Like, how, why is that? Like, why is it so bad? Because it's all over Xbox Live, right? So why would it be any different? Um, I guess I, I think it. Game. I think it actually uses more, you know, more facilities if you go into a party chat. Because it sounds a lot better in party chat. Like I, I went. And played, Everything sounds better. I, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's, all games. It's it, there's some games that like um, that are just completely. Like, they're not like Black Ops has pretty decent. I think well, it did last time I played. Yeah, but it. yeah, but doesn't the um, in-game audio play off the host? I believe. I'm get, I'm get, This is this is what I'm thinking. That might Whereas be. Whereas the Xbox Live plays off whoever is the party leader. Because I know we used to have a problem with Gears 2 when it was, you know, the host advantage in there was so massive that we'd never have the party leader the same as the Xbox Live party leader because we did notice it messed it up. I don't know if that's just us and placebo effect. I don't know. but uh, I think Max said something about that. That that, that was an issue that, that they came up against. Um whenever they were discussing party chat. Mm. Well, no, yeah, I noticed a difference. And that's, for me, that was a big selling point, um, mm. was that right there. So, and uh, hopefully PlayStation will do something on the next iteration because I, I hardly ever play it, although it seems like it has better exclusives, but uh, I hardly ever, ever play my PlayStation 3. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is there anything else you guys want to cover? Because uh, I know it's got to be running really late. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, best too. Yeah, we need to we need to wrap this up. But I, I, I appreciate it, BA, for, for, for coming on and saying what you have to say. I know it's got to be it's got to be rough. Um, maybe, if it's possible, if you guys, the EU Forum, just do your, do one in the future, just the four guys from the EU Forum. That way, you don't have to have a time difference. No, no, no. In the future. Well, most mostly EU Forum, to be fair. Just to... just make sure that. That lemmings and BTI don't get to drink, and then that's the only stipulation. Poor guys. Has Has V got his glasses on? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> V's got to do it with his eyes closed. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, guys. Appreciate everybody coming out to right. watch the cast. Uh, Please thanks, guys. Too. Yeah, we will be back. Yeah, I mean, if we can make it to three, that's a miracle. That's that's a super success, I think. Just making it to the second one's I awesome. I think just making it past the first one was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's amazing. All right, well, I appreciate it, everybody. Thanks for coming out, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, boys. All right. Oh, don't, don't say nothing, because you're still on. What?
I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Go I can't to myself. Damn it. I hate that weedy motherfucker. Yeah, you can't be like <laughs> fuck weedy, like because I can't. Yeah. I can't close the stream for right now. He needs to put the drink down before his liver falls out. <laughs> damn it. Wait, wait, weedy's still here. I thought he'd be asleep by now. He passed out. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, guys. You I'm betcha. Here. I'm going to go play some, some League of Legends. <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs>